Hello dear people and welcome to another exciting -ish episode about aviation history and gaming right here on Joe Mayday's TV channel. Our today's topic is going to be this strange P-51, a P-51 armed with 20mm cannons. And I know you're probably wondering, what is this 20mm version doing in the United States inventory? When somebody thinks about the P-51 in American service, he probably thinks about this one, or this one. Or any other version with a 50 cal, not this 20mm blasphemy. How did it end up in the US inventory in the first place? Well, I have already done a video about the origins of the P-51 and you can find the link somewhere on the screen or in the comments section, probably. But let's once again go over some basics. The P-51 was actually developed for the British, as an answer to the request of the British Purchasing Commission. And the British were in a bit of a hurry to get as much as aircraft as possible, as fast as possible, to fight the Germans. The British were initially interested in the P-40 that was produced by the Curtis company. But their production lines were being overwhelmed. So the idea was that the North American company comes in and helps out the Curtis in the production of the P-40 aircraft for the Great Britain. But they had a different idea. They basically said, what if we can produce a more powerful, more potent aircraft with the same Ellison engine? And the British basically said, why not? But you have to produce it fast and its top price has to be lower than 40,000 US dollars. And now it was time for the engineers of the North American Aircraft Corporation to get to work. And after 3,500 drawings and 1,800 work hours, they have finally produced a prototype of the new airplane designated the NA-73X and the prototype had its maiden flight on the 26th of October 1940 after just 127 days in production. The new aircraft was designed to be fast and it was. It achieved a top speed of 382 miles per hour at the height of 14,000 feet. The new aircraft's production batches were designated as follows. The NA-73X for the prototype, which was equipped with an 1100 horsepower 12-cylinder Ellison engine. And it was designed to carry four 50 kels and four 30 kel machine guns. And based on these specifications, the first batch of 320 aircraft was produced for the RIF. The next batch of aircraft consisted of 300 NA-83s. And now finally we come to the star of this show, the NA-91. 150 of these aircraft were ordered by the British. But only 93 were supplied and the rest, consisting of 57 aircraft, stayed in the United States. But there isn't any record that I could find to prove that this aircraft actually saw combat. They were used as reconnaissance aircraft, designated T-6A, and they were used for training. And later on, 20mm cannons were replaced by the 50 cals and pretty soon the icon that we all know started to form its shape. But enough about the history part, let's see how it performs in the game. So the aircraft is fast and it's got a really nice firepower. But for its BR it doesn't have the best of climbs so you have to do a bit of a side climb early in the game and that's what we did in this one. But, as in many other games on the lower BR, most of the action is going on really low. So sometimes you just have to adapt your tactics and have in mind what's best for the team. So, down we go. And let's try to give a hand to that Spitfire and Tempest. And unfortunately the Spitfire is taken out and Tempest also. But we have already committed to this fight and let's see what happens out of it. We are coming in fast and the first C-202 is taken out. And rapidly we take another one out. A BF-190. And you may have noticed that we just barely missed that Italian fighter. But nevertheless, two aircraft are down. Three to go. And in comes another friendly. He engages the Italian fighter and they take themselves out. So it is a one versus two. 
the game is developing quite rapidly. Head on, misses, off to the vertical, a bit overconfident vertical, I was pretty sure they will not catch me, but some rounds are hitting on us, it is time for a semi loop, and we shall try to get back on the tail of the BF-109, and we actually managed to do it. Put in some rounds, and we do get a hit on him. And now I'm using my superior top speed and the energy advantage from before to disengage because I do not want to be stuck in a dogfight when there are two enemies. So off we go. But the enemy decides to head back probably to, the, to his base because he has suffered some damage and now it is time to re-engage and enter into the fight. The BF-109 is moving away from us, the JU-87 is coming towards us. A short burst, and he's out. Now it is just a BF-109 in front of us. He's trying to run away, but we are faster, we are gaining on, on him. And pretty soon we shall be in a position to open fire. And the enemy bomber is bombing our base, that is not a good thing, by any means. But let us focus for now on this BF-109. With each passing second we become a bit closer. And it is just a matter of time until we catch him. He has to turn around and fight basically. His airfield is still reasonably far away, and he does it. He goes into a left turn, and we are going into the vertical to perform another loop. And once again, the maneuver has worked perfectly. We are just wh where we want to be, and he's out. The fourth enemy is out. A good and a fun game, unfortunately with a bad ending. The enemy's bomber won this one for the enemy team. You can clearly see here the results of my impatience while taking the enemy bomber. An enemy premium bomber for that matter. But the aircraft has delivered and only a human error prevented it from becoming an ace and winning the game. But let's see how it will perform in the next one. Unfortunately it is still with the same pilot so expect pretty much similar results. But let's see how the game will unfold. We are off on a dive on a BF-110G and we managed to score some critical hits. He should go down eventually. And let's continue with the fight. We are turning towards our right now. BF-110 is smoking all over the place. But we mark as a target this BF-109F, F2 I believe. He's engaging our friendly and we have to take him out soon and we have. He's out of the fight. And so is that BF-110. Now we have to disengage a bit and convert all of that speed to altitude. And then, but our friendly is in all sorts of trouble, we have to go help him. But uh, unfortunately he crashes to the ground before we got there. And we take out another BF-109. So it's just one enemy left. A bit of evasing maneuvering. We are still very fast. We have converted a lot of that altitude into speed. And basically we are safe. I feel a bit bad for that friendly aircraft, we should have gotten there in time, but what can you do? Life in War Thunder is such. But let's get to one thing that you may have noticed in both games, this one and the last one. The P-51, especially with 20mm cannons, is an excellent boomer and zoomer. You have to simply come from a high above, attack the enemies, make your runs, fire rounds at them, 
try to take out as many as you can and then get the hell out of there. Use that speed to get out. Don't don't stay and don't engage in any turn fights unless you really really have to. Because that is the easiest way to get yourself killed. And that goes for most people. And for me of course. But I personally majority of the time die because I get completely impatient or I completely lose this situational awareness. And let's see what should it be in this or the following engagement. Will I die because of the complete loss of situational awareness or will I die because of impatience? Let's see. The first attack run on the bomber has gone well and we have our base practically there, really near. So the idea is to bring him down fastly and then if we damage ourselves we can go for repairs very very fast. And the enemy is out. Our fourth kill once again. The airbase is right there. Our airplane has not suffered much, much of damage. But I'm thinking to myself, hey, why not land then? resupply on the ammo but then I hear, hear something and then I see something on the little mini map to our right there is somebody here somebody I have not noticed it is a Spitfire and we got obliterated I absolutely completely lost situational awareness and I was not aware of him that he was here until it was totally too late so once again the plane delivered, but unfortunately yours truly did not. But all in all the P-51 or NA-91 is a brilliant aircraft in War Thunder. You just have to be patient and gain some nice altitude and then rush down from the top, converting that altitude into speed, engage the enemies, throw bullets at them and then get safely out of there. If you get up tiered, implement these tactics. If you get down tier, you will club them to death. Well, basically, by not implementing any tactics. It's just a brilliant aircraft. So that will be all for today. I hope you have enjoyed the video. And if you have, please like and share. And if you haven't, please do it also because you are a wonderful person. Until the next time, have a fantastic day.